All right, guys, today it's all about how not to get ripped off when you're buying used ham radio gear, this time on K6 UDA Radio. <laughs> Let's do this. Guys, welcome back to the big show. It's been a minute since you and I have uh, had a little get together. Yeah, that's because I've been doing a lot of stuff over on Rumble and consequently not so much over here. Uh, But today I want to talk about something that uh, I think would be near and dear to all of our hearts Today, it's about how not to get ripped off when you're buying used ham radio gear online. Hey, before we actually get started, if you're a 2A fan, if you're a fan of the the 2A arts, go over to Rumble and check out my latest one. Uh, It is really, really cool. Uh, Actually did a review on a couple of pistols. 1911s, my friends. So if you're into that kind of stuff, go over there and check that out. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about ham radio scams. We'll talk about a little bit about everything, but in particular, how to spot a scam online. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, oh, that's real easy. But there's some safety tips that uh, we can all kind of remember. (laughs) First of all, let's talk about uh, new or used equipment. A lot of you guys that are just getting into the hobby, you're just, you just got your license or you're studying for your license right now, and you're looking for that first piece of ham radio gear. You may be very, very tempted to go the bargain route. Look, uh, used instead of new, I get it. Uh, there can be a lot of uh, a lot of fluctuation in the price of stuff. New, this uh, Yesu FTDX10 is about twelve to fourteen hundred dollars ish on the used market. You could expect to pay uh, eight hundred to a thousand dollars. And yes, that's uh, quite a bit of savings for a fairly new piece of gear. But there's guys that are selling uh, used gear, well, 20, 30-year-old equipment, and they'll tell you that it's uh, in great shape. It was used in a non-smoking home only on occasion when the moon was blue, and uh, it's like brand new. But hey, it's an ICOM 706 Mark II 30-year-old machine or a 20-year-old machine or a little bit newer. It's a, uh, let's say, an ICOM IC7300. They want $750 for it. Uh, that's a good price, actually. It's uh, That radio can be had on brand new on some sales for about maybe 900 to 1000 a couple of times a year when uh, either ICOM is trying to blow them out for the year or your local ham radio store or your online ham radio store is doing the same thing. Look for those Black Friday deals on things like the 7300. Uh, for that matter, uh, great deals on the things like the uh, DX10 here. Uh, will be coming up for Black Friday. Also, if you're into uh, just straight UHF, VHF machines, you could look for those Black Friday stuff. There's a lot more of those for sale on the online used market. And for that matter, handhelds, online used market. All right, that brings me to my second point. Where to find all of this used ham radio gear? Now, uh, you could go on eBay, and there'll be some on eBay, but you won't get the cream of the crop on eBay. 
you're going to get a lot of really overpriced stuff, uh, maybe stuff from overseas. If it says it's shipping from Japan or it's shipping from another country and you're in the U.S., you got to beware. Number one, beware of getting something that isn't built or it's not opened up for the U.S. ham band. A lot of Japanese radios come shipped uh, for the Japanese ham band, which is different from the U.S. ham band. And while some of those uh, some of those frequencies may cross over, ours may go a little bit lower or a little bit higher than the Japanese. They may have different uh, configurations. So be very very aware, and you want to get uh, something that is an a model for America, American model. Now, where else are you going to be able to find good, clean, American uh, <laughs> ham radio gear? My first thought is a website called QRZ. QRZ.com. QRZ, as we call it in the ham radio world, this is probably, I would say, the premier spot for used ham radio gear. Um, they have a swap meet. So you can go to the swap meet hot list. This, this is going to give you a sampling of the newest equipment that's listed. And you're going to notice something here. And this is very, very important. I'm just going to pick on one. Here is, all right, this is a perfect example of, and you can't see it, uh, of an ad on QRZ. This is uh, an ad for an Elecraft 500 watt amp with the tuner. And you'll notice number one, the guy who's uh, listing this, I'm going to put my glasses on. So I can zoom in on this stuff. Uh, the guy here, KE4D, is listing this. Um, let's try this again. Decided to wait for the Elecraft box and amp. So he took his he took his ad down last week, and now he's found his box. So he's reposting it. That's a really good sign. A lot of hams, including me, we save the boxes. So if it ever comes time to ship it back for service or do something or sell it, we've got the original box for those ham radio pieces and parts, mainly those radios. But um, it shows that he's taken good care of it. He's probably the original owner. And I assume that he's probably upgraded to the Elecraft 1500 watt amp or he's bought another amp. One of the things I want you to uh, notice here in his picture, there's a sticky note attached to his picture with his uh, call sign, his name, and the date. That's a clear indication that he actually has this piece of equipment this is not a scam he has the piece of equipment he's asking for this piece of equipment he's going to ship this combo for twenty seven hundred dollars that's uh quite the deal all right now let's look at another one this is uh, an ICOM IC7300. This is probably one of the most popular radios in the world. Again, this guy's posted his um, call sign, his name, and the date that he's listing this thing uh, on a piece of paper. You can't fake it. He's not like superimposing He's not making a digital sign for his call sign. He's actually putting up a piece of paper that he hand wrote this stuff. Now, uh, other things that I would absolutely consider safe is if a guy put a uh, put in the picture uh, QSL card. 
Guys that have pre-printed QSL cards will sometimes put those in. And I would absolutely trust that a guy that has this or does this has that radio in his possession. Now, let's move on over to Facebook Marketplace. And uh, actually, Facebook, this is the ham radio market. There's several ham radio for sale uh, groups on Facebook. And there's some great deals to be had on, uh, on Facebook Marketplace. But... There's a much greater chance of having a scam ad in there. Notice guys are posting pictures of stuff. This is a Kenwood TS2000. And uh, so let's move on down to uh, another radio here for sale. This is a uh, another ICOM IC7300 in fantastic condition. 900 pounds. I assume this guy is somewhere in Great Britain. Doesn't say where he's at. Converting 900 pounds to dollars is about $1,150. If you're in the U.S., my friends, you can buy this radio cheaper, new, than this guy's selling it for wherever he's at. So I would pass. That would be a hard pass. Um, lots and lots of stuff. Tubes. Guys selling tubes. Ah, guys selling a, uh, a mobile radio. I don't know why people aren't putting their call signs in. Um, I would ask people, if you're talking about getting... Here's a, 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 a new, like new... IC7300. I assume that this one, yep, this guy's in Tennessee. He wants eight and a quarter shipped. Notice in his picture, he has his call sign, his name, and the date of his listing. I trust that this guy has that radio and that that radio is probably in about the condition that he is advertising it because he's he's willing to share with you his real call sign, his name. You could verify that all on the FCC website or on QRZ. Here's a guy with that ICOM 706. Uh, it was kept, well kept, was in storage, and the face got dark. Okay. That's bad. That's not a uh, that's not a good thing. He wants three hundred dollars, guys. I spent three hundred and fifty dollars for one in perfect working order. Three hundred is way too much. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to buy somebody else's headache. All right. Now my third bit of advice: if it looks too good to be true. It's a great deal. Fantastic. Unbelievable. You're ripping him off deal. I got news for you, my friend. He's ripping you off. So every so often, I'm perusing the Facebook marketplace for ham radio gear. I'm always looking for stuff. Who knows? If you think that this deal is sounds almost, almost too good to be true. It's an unbelievable deal. Brand new FTDX10 for $600 because, you know, the guy needs money, whatever. I present to you the Jesus FTDX3000. This guy, it looks like he took most of this and just copied and pasted from a spec sheet from a uh, from a Yesu radio and he turned it into a Jesus radio. I don't know. Um, last time I read the Bible, Jesus wasn't selling radios. The things that I find suspicious about an ad like this, but 
he doesn't really tell you what condition this particular radio is in. Uh, he doesn't tell you his call sign. He doesn't tell you anything. He basically gives you a product spec sheet, and that's all you get. The uh, pictures look fantastic, but there's one thing that's missing is something with the guy's call sign in here. I see no call sign. I see no way to identify this guy as a legitimate ham radio operator. That's a huge red flag to me. All right. And speaking of those red flags that I just talked about, uh, a few of the big red flags are, number one, that unbelievable price. I'm going to get something fantastic for so little money, I could never find this deal anywhere else. Uh, the A guy advertising a 7300 for $400. Well, um, that's probably a scam, unless there's something wrong with that radio. And that might be a scam too. Other red flags that I see are guys that uh, don't give you a call sign or they give you a fake call sign or they give you somebody else's call sign or I'm selling this for my brother who is currently deployed in, uh, you know, Ubekistan. I don't know. There's a million scams, all the old scams that you've heard of for everything else apply here. But it's really easy to, uh, to figure out a lot of those scams. First of all, get a ham radio call sign. Get their call sign. Look them up. Go back over to uh, qrz.com, qrz.com, and look up the call sign that they tell you. You're going to have uh, a page. Everybody has a page, even if they've never been on QRZ. I have a page and uh, I have an official hover over email address of k6uda at gmail.com. This is what I have listed as my official email for QRZ for ham radio. Uh, I would have no problem taking an email address that a guy gives you on, say, Facebook, comparing it to the email address that you would find under his call sign on QRZ. And if they don't match, email him on the call sign from QRZ. Ask him if he's selling XYZ radio. If he's legitimate, and he is, fine. You uh, you've now have another point of verification. If he hasn't, he's going to tell you no. And then you could tell him, hey, somebody is trying to sell stuff under your call sign. And you might save somebody else some uh, aggravation. Now, that brings me to my last point for today's video. Uh, the silent key sale. What's a silent key? All right. When uh, it's basically a guy's estate. He's dead. That's the nice way that ham radio operators uh, refer to a now deceased or unalived uh, ham radio operator is as a silent key. Anyway, silent key sales. These normally are done uh on behalf of, say, the widow or the family of a, uh, of a now deceased ham radio operator. I know uh, very recently uh, a, local, a local guy here, uh, he passed away. The president of our local club ran basically a silent key sale. It was pretty much local. Everything went. There was, he had lots of stuff. Uh, and to help his wife out, uh, our club basically sold everything at no cost or no cost to her 
she got all the proceeds of uh, all the equipment that the club sold for her or that uh, our club president basically did. And uh, almost everything sold, I believe. And for fair prices, uh, I would say there wasn't any great deals in there. Uh, but this guy, he had a ton of equipment. He had radios. He had antennas, lots of antennas. Uh, so there was guys in the area, basically, that benefited, that that made some good deals, got some very nice equipment, and uh, basically tried to help out this guy's widow uh, with getting rid of that ham radio equipment that she's never going to use. So also... Uh, if you think someday you might become a silent key and you've got a ton of uh, ham radio gear or other stuff, um, make sure that you write down the values of your gear and not the stuff you told your wife you paid for it. You know, everybody knows that I uh, told my wife I paid $100 for this radio, but... In all actuality, between you and I, uh, on opening day, I think I paid close to $500 for this radio. Anyway, guys, uh, that's all I got for this time. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, hit please. Hit the subscribe button, the notification, all the good stuff over here on YouTube and also on Rumble. If you haven't visited my other channel over on Rumble, uh, K6UDA Guns and Ham Radio, uh, for the latest of everything here, plus all the 2A content that I'm doing over there exclusively. And uh, man, I got some cool, cool stuff up over there. Uh, just hit a thousand subscribers over there really really cool thank you also the idaho preparedness channel if you're in idaho if you're into preparedness you want to go visit that one we do some very very cool stuff plus nets every week that's building the community anyway guys uh that's it for me this time and uh thanks for joining me i will talk to you later i'm bob k6uda I'm out of here, 7-3.